News 8 starts now. Attacked. A shark rips off a Kauai surfer's arm. Tonight, eyewitnesses describe the terrifying encounter. I was completely in shock, and then I, you know, I got, I got sick to my stomach. We have 19 coverage as fellow surfers react to the vicious attack. A man opens fire outside a California courthouse, and it's all caught on tape. No tricks, just treats at this local cafe. It's Cheap Eats in Kalihi. Plus, why an Eva family spends months to turn this happy home into Hawaii's scariest haunted house. Now, from Hilo to Hanalei, live, local, late breaking, this is News 8 at 10 with Howard Dashevsky and Jody Leong. Good evening, everybody. We begin tonight with a late-breaking story from Kamehameha School. There are reports tonight several football players there have been suspended. News 8's Russell Yamanoha joins us live now with more on the story. Russ? That's right. The Islands Football Championship is on the line tomorrow night when state number two Kamehameha takes on number three St. Louis. But going into that game, some bad news for Kamehameha. According to an unnamed school official, several Kamehameha football players have been indefinitely suspended from school and will not play in the ILH title game tomorrow night against St. Louis. Unconfirmed reports say the players may have been involved in an incident last week on the Kapalama campus in which they were videotaped engaging in sexual activity with a female student. A Kamehameha spokesman said tonight that he could neither confirm nor deny the report, adding that it is Kamehameha school policy that matters of disciplinary action against students are kept confidential. Several calls to school officials were not returned tonight. We'll have more coming up later in sports. Thanks a lot, Russell. Now to our other top story. A 13-year-old Kauai girl is recovering tonight after a shark bit off her arm. Bethany Hamilton is in stable condition at Wilcox Hospital on Kauai tonight. She was attacked at about 8 o'clock this morning at Tunnels Beach, a popular surfing spot on Kauai's North Shore. We have night team coverage. Marvin Buenkitsejo tells us how the attack is affecting the surfing community. But we begin with News 8's Lisa Kubota, live from Ala Moana. Lisa? Howard, just to give you an idea of how large the shark is, this is the size of the 17-inch long bite mark it left behind. Now tonight, shark experts are studying the girl's surfboard for clues about the creature. Because it, it was a large piece. A real, it was a big shark. Police measured the nearly 17-inch long bite mark on the mangled surfboard. This morning's violent attack surprised swimmers at the popular surf spot Tunnels Beach. Bethy Hamilton was just kind of playing around and the next thing I knew she, uh, she was kind of going for a wave and she went from squealing of joy to pain and a shark just took off her arm from, the, you know, from here down. Amateur surfer Bethany Hamilton, seen here in a surf meet last summer, was with her friend Alana Blanchard and Alana's father, Holt Blanchard. In an instant, 13-year-old Bethany lost her left arm just below the shoulder. There was no movement. It was a clean attack. She just took a bite and split. Walba called 911 while Holt Blanchard applied a tourniquet using a board leash. Friends even went back out to search for the arm, hoping doctors could reattach it. We're trying to get a boat together to go look for her arm. Because it, it took a big chunk of foam, and usually when they do that, they spit it right out. Lifeguards posted warning signs and closed off a section of the shoreline. Judging by the bite mark, experts estimate the shark to be 12 to 15 feet long. Bethany's family declined to talk to the media, but issued a statement asking for everyone's prayers. The whole way through it, she remained conscious, and she, she was trying to paddle in by herself. She kept it together the whole way in. She never cried. I, I didn't see her cry, and she, uh, she was a trooper. Authorities say water conditions were clear at the time of the attack and that there were no indications that sharks were in the area. Lifeguards plan to reopen the stretch between Ke'e and Wainiha Beach tomorrow morning. Reporting live from Ala Moana Beach Park, Lisa Kubota, News 8. Thank you, Lisa. The tragic event has sent a shockwave through the local surfing community. The night team's Marvin Buenconsejo continues our coverage. Marv? Well, you know, Bethany Hamilton and professional surfer Keala Kennelly have a good deal in common. Both are from the Garden Isle, born and raised. Both made their marks tearing it up on the ocean. But those similarities have only served to amplify Kala Canelli's reaction to the stunning news. I was completely in shock and then I, you know, I got, I got sick to my stomach. I just wanted to throw up, you know. And uh, my whole family was actually in my apartment when we found out and my mom was screaming and 
you know, my parents knew the girl a lot better than I. Kiala Canelli is the top-ranked professional surfer on the World Championship Tour. She's also starred in the movie Blue Crush. Canelli says she had the pleasure of meeting Bethany this past August. She was with a group of her friends, and she was really excited to meet me. And she wanted they all wanted to talk about surfing and tell me about all their contests and results and stuff. And just a really happy, fun girl. I think it's it's so unfair, you know. Like there's so many kids out there you know, doing drugs or getting into trouble. And, you know, here you have a young girl that's so positive and, you know, doing, doing something really positive for herself, going out in the ocean and doing sports. Canelli is 25 years old, 12 years older than Bethany Hamilton. The elder stateswoman sends this personal message to young Bethany. I wish her the best and you have to just be strong. And, you know, it's definitely going to be a big life-changing thing for her, but her life is by far way not over, and she just has to be strong and hang in there, and I'm, I'm praying for her. Now at this moment, Canelli is on her way to Fiji for a photo shoot, but she says she plans on visiting Bethany as soon as the pro surfer returns home. Reporting live, Marvin Boykin, Seho News 8. Thanks a lot, Marv. Also on Kauai, a mother and daughter spent the day together after five years apart. Elka Hersher arrived on Kauai from Florida last night, one day after receiving word her missing daughter had been found. Police found 11-year-old Angeline was with Hersher's ex-husband. John Bryan, John Michael Bryan, is accused of kidnapping Angeline in 1998. Kauai police arrested Bryan on Wednesday. Back on Oahu, a 30-year-old man went to court today to face charges he opened fire outside Porky's Bar in Kailua. Lua. Joseph Leake is accused of shooting a 16-year-old boy and a 24-year-old man early Monday. In court today, Leake's attorneys argued there isn't enough as evidence to support attempted murder charges. But the judge disagreed and sent the case to trial. Leake is set to be arraigned at circuit court November 13th. Honolulu police are looking for possible witnesses to a deadly shooting in IA over the weekend. Police believe these two people may know something about the murder, and they are asking for the two witnesses to come forward. 49-year-old Greg Morishima was gunned down Sunday night by several masked gunmen. The suspects took off in a beige or tan-colored SUV. If you have any information about the case, you are asked to call Honolulu police. News 8 Everywhere begins tonight with some dramatic and frightening video. A man opened fire on his attorney outside a California courthouse today, and it was all caught on tape. And we warn you, the video you're about to see is disturbing. Witnesses believe 60-year-old William Stryler fired as many as seven shots at his attorney. I heard pow. Not pop, but it was a large pow, and then followed by three more. Stryler calmly walked away as 53-year-old Jerry Curry, still standing, asked for help. News photographer Daniel Diaz identified Stryler before police arrested him. This is the gun! He was angry. He was very focused, yes. He just kept saying, you know, that's what he gets to do. Several witnesses say they first heard the two men arguing that Stryler yelled at his attorney. At first, Curry tried to hide behind his briefcase. Then he sought safety behind a tree. Dozens of television cameras and reporters were on the scene covering the Robert Blake hearing, an unrelated case. But they found themselves witnesses to this bizarre shooting. Although the gunman fired from near point blank range, his bloodied victim was responsive to emergency personnel before they transported him to the hospital in stable condition. Police say it appears Stryler was angry about a probate case, but they did not offer any other details. In other news tonight, a disaster just 22 feet off the ground in Japan, a small stunt plane crashing in front of thousands of onlookers. The light aircraft crash is a rehearse for an acrobatic stunt for an air show in Motegi, Japan. It's north of Tokyo. The Russian pilot flying the plane survived the crash but is reportedly in serious condition tonight. More than 2,000 people were gathered to see the stunts and witness the crash. Nobody on the ground was injured as a result of this crash. To Southern California now, where homeowner Ben Mosco grabbed his camera as fire nearly devoured his home. It looked like a lost cause until helicopters showed up to drop water right on top of the fire. So far, the California wildfires have claimed 20 lives and destroyed more than 2,800 homes. They've also charred nearly 750,000 acres. And contestants on a British reality show were expecting a treat but ended up getting tricked. The contestants on the show Find Me a Man learned at the end of the show that Miriam, an attractive woman, 
they'd been pursuing, so they thought was an attractive woman, but she proved to be a man. The contestants are demanding that the show not be broadcast and have even hired a lawyer. Sky One Television says the show is not currently scheduled to air. Thousands of ghosts and goblins pack into Waikiki. We'll take you there next when News 8 at 10 continues. But hey, why go to Waikiki when perhaps the scariest place on earth is in the Eva Plains? It's a spooky haunted house that even had our reporter transforming into an evil demon. And rest in peace, it's R&Ps and it's the focus of tonight's Cheap Eats. And a little bit later in sports, we have a Halloween edition of Aloha Friday football. Will there be any spooky upsets? It's playoff time, and Russell has highlights. And nothing scary about the weekend forecast. Good news for surfers, another swell is headed our way. I'll have all the details coming up later in your neighborhood weather forecast. A look at high temperatures across the state today. Kahului Maui coming in as the hot spot with a high of 91 degrees. News 8 at 10, we'll be right back. This portion of News 8 is brought to you by Outrigger Entertainment. Make your reservations now for Society of Seven Las Vegas at the Outrigger Main Showroom. Happy Halloween. You're looking live from Waikiki tonight. Traffic is backed up as thousands pack into Kalakaua Avenue to show off their costumes and have a good time once the traffic eases. These are parties at the Wave Waikiki. There are parties at the Wave Waikiki tonight. Restaurant Row, Aloha Tower, and many other sites across Oahu. And when you think of Halloween, costumes and trick-or-treating probably come to mind. Ah, uh, but that's all child's play for one family and Eva. They're modern-day monsters, and they take their Halloween holiday very seriously. We send news H to and Shin out there earlier tonight. This is how she appeared on News 8 at 5. Well, since then, she has undergone a little bit of a transformation. I can't believe they did this. This is a doing of the Armstrong family. And like I said, this is no ordinary family, one that can take just about anyone back to the dark side. They say at this house, somewhere deep in Eva, each year on Halloween, there's something strange that goes on. Come in a little closer. Even closer. Meet the Armstrongs. They spend half a year planning for today. There's only two holidays that we actually really celebrate. It's only Halloween and New Year's. That's Bill and Tim, the masterminds behind this wicked creation. Two brothers living out a childhood fantasy. We grew up in Kali Valley, scaring kids in the graveyard. Now they have Tim's house and a budget to work with to create what they call the haunted house of all haunted houses. My mother said that the last graveyard that we had wasn't good enough because the headstones were made out of cardboard. <laughs> And that's when the madness began. Our motto is, if someone says we can't do it, then we do our, the best we can to uh, make it happen. My pride and joy uh, is actually the crematorium. The garage converted into an elaborate maze, created not from a do-it-yourself kit, but derived from pure insanity. <laughs> six months of work, $600 spent, half a football field of cardboard. It's just unreal what we can do with cardboard. The result? Tim's wife will not go through it. My daughter is totally terrified. She won't even go during the day. One house few dare to venture into. Those who do may never come out alive. <laughs> <laughs> and the Armstrongs will be here as long as there are trick-or-treaters to scare. And one more thing, have a happy and safe Halloween. Reporting on scene from Eva, Joanne Shin, News 8. Yeah, they're having lots of fun. You're normal neighbors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the scariest ride on the Las Vegas Strip. Or perhaps anywhere on the planet. Buckle up. It's coming your way next on News 8 at 10. Also, your weather with meteorologist Sherry Shima as we take a peek at Waihe School, one of our neighborhood school net locations. 80 degrees at this hour. This portion of News 8 is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Check in a lot faster with Hawaiian Airlines Hele on check-in. It's as simple as one, two, three. Hawaiian Airlines Hele on check-in.